Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo All-in-One 910. Now, we looked at something similar from the Lenovo about a year or so ago, and this is a uh, all-in-one computer where the uh, base has most of the guts of the computer, and you've got a, a relatively slim monitor uh, attached to it. Now, this is the new one. The old one we looked at last year was a 1080p display. Uh, this one is now a 4K touch display on the higher-end model, and we'll get into uh, some of the differences on all their models in a second. Now, this is a very reflective screen as you can see here so uh, when we start doing some of the tests we'll just connect the computer directly to my video uh, capturing hardware here just to uh, at least give you the ability to see what's on the screen but I'll describe the display in a little more detail in just a second but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure this is on loan from Lenovo so all the opinions you're about to hear are my own nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted all right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware now. We've got that 27-inch display. This one is a, a 4K display, but they have a less expensive version, which is also 27 inches at 1080p. I'll be honest with you, though, I'm really not crazy about the display quality. It is an IPS display. You do have the 4K resolution going for it, but it doesn't look all that great because of the touch layer. It really clouds up the image a bit, makes it very reflective, and uh, there's a big air gap between the glass and the actual display. So you can almost look underneath the, uh, the bezel here on the side and see the display kind of almost running underneath it. So I'm really not crazy about how the display looks. But what's cool about this design, and Lenovo had a computer uh, last year that did a similar thing, is that you can actually have the display go down flat like so. It does bounce a little bit because it's kind of bouncing on that arm, but uh, you can operate it kind of as a big tablet if you wanted to. Uh, you could probably get one of those Bluetooth styluses that does the wrist de detection and uh, be able to do some drawing on here. I don't think it'll be as good as the Surface Studio that we were uh, seeing from Microsoft that just came out this month, but uh, still pretty usable, I think, as a uh, drawing surface if you're into that kind of thing. And you do have a lot of range of motion that you can make on this arm. It's generally well balanced. There is a lot of friction on the arm, which is good because it doesn't, doesn't flop around too much on you after you set it in place. But uh, if you push it too hard, you might uh, slide the whole computing unit off with it. So you definitely want to be careful. Maybe hold down the base a little bit as you're uh, making some adjustments. All of the guts of the computer are in the lower section here. So you've got an i7 uh, 6700T processor. It's a quad core i7. has 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, but for those of, of you who are techies out there, it is in single channel configuration. So it runs a little slower than it might if it was in dual channel configuration. I'll show you some uh, tests that will give you some ideas to what that means for performance. It has a, a 256 gigabyte SSD built in along with a one terabyte hard drive. I believe the less expensive models just have the one terabyte drive. It's powered with a GPU also. So this more expensive version with the 4K display has a GTX 950A from NVIDIA. Uh, the less expensive one has a 940A. Uh, those have two gigabytes of video RAM on board. These are not very fast GPUs, so they're really not well suited for high-end gaming, but they're better than nothing. So a lot of uh, some of these uh, desktop PCs like this machine often don't come with a GPU at all and are relying on the processor's built-in video capabilities. Uh, this one at least will come with the GPU that will uh, be better than nothing, but uh, not as good as the uh, Y910 we looked at from Lenovo a couple of weeks ago that was geared uh, more towards gamers. So uh, you'll see what that NVIDIA GPU will do for you on this one in a little bit when we look at some of the gaming examples, but it'll definitely be fine for video editing and photo editing and some light gaming, but uh, you will not get a 4K game to run on this display. You'll definitely want to turn your settings down when you load games up on it. Uh, the power brick on this, though, is pretty large. So you remember with that uh, Y910 we looked at from Lenovo, the power supply was integrated into the unit, uh, not here. So you will have a pretty big power brick uh, sitting on the floor, or in my case, on the desk here as you're putting that together. Uh, the other cool thing was this one came with an external DVD burner, too. So if you have disks that you want to burn or load onto your computer, you can plug that external drive into its USB port and be able to load some things up on it. Uh, this one, as configured, costs about $1,600. They also uh, start around $949 for the 1080p version. I'll put a link down below in the video description so you can see what some of the configuration options are. And for ports, you've got an analog headset microphone adapter here. You've got a USB 2.0 port. Uh, they do include a wireless keyboard and mouse, and that's probably where they want you to plug in your dongle for those things. Uh, over here is a gigabit Ethernet adapter. You've got 
your power plug there for the big power brick, and then right here is an HDMI port, a full-size HDMI port. Uh, that will work as an output, uh, but it will also work as an input. So if you have a Blu-ray player or a game console that you wish to connect to the monitor, uh, you can plug it into that port and have that device display on screen. There's a button on the side here for switching it uh, between those devices so you can uh, choose what gets displayed on screen. It is not a captured device, though, so you can't capture game footage through it. It just uh, routes the video to the monitor directly. Uh, you've got uh, three USB 3.0 ports here, and then it's got a micro SD card reader, which is kind of strange on a desktop computer because typically you get a full-size uh, SD card slot on computers like this, but uh, this one just has the micro SD slot. So let's take a look now and see how this computer performs. All right, so let's start off with some YouTube here, and you can see how well it is playing back a 1080p 60 file here on screen, so it seems to be keeping up fine with that. I also tested it with it in 4K mode. Right now we switched down to 1080 for the video capture here, but uh, you will do fine with YouTube and Netflix and uh, other online services like that. Uh, web browsing is also pretty decent on here too, so you can get around the internet pretty easily without any issues also. This is an i7 machine. It's got a lot of uh, horsepower for processing the modern web, and I don't think you're going to see uh, any real issues doing web browsing or anything else like that. And on the Octane benchmark test running in Google Chrome, I got a score of 35,257, which surprisingly uh, is slower than the i3 machine we built a couple of weeks ago here on the channel. And I think it has to do with the fact that this RAM is running uh, in single channel configuration versus the dual channel configuration we had uh, that little i3 computer running at. So I think that's one area where RAM speed uh, makes a difference because it can feed data to that processor faster. And this processor is a lot faster, so we should have seen a uh, better score in that Octane test. For consumers, what does it mean? Absolutely nothing. It's still going to be very, very fast on the web and doing all of the things that you would want to do uh, online. It just won't be as fast as it could be, but I don't think anyone really will notice the difference. And it also does fine with things like Microsoft Word. So we've got our newsletter template up here, and you can see it is uh, very quickly responding to things as we're adjusting image sizes and having text reflow. So I don't think you'll have any issues doing uh, all of the casual tasks that you might do on a family PC like this. Uh, that includes video editing and uh, photo editing and everything else. It's probably fine for those kinds of things. But let's see how it does with gaming, because it does have a GPU on here, but not the most powerful GPU you can get. So let's see what that means for performance. All right, so let's start off with Minecraft as we always do. And remember that we're running at 1080p right now versus the uh, 4K resolution on the display. But uh, we are getting about 250 frames per second or thereabouts, so not a bad uh, Minecraft experience. I bet you, you probably could run this at 4K without uh, dipping down too low either because Minecraft really doesn't demand all that much out of the GPU. So uh, not bad for Minecraft. The Windows 10 version of Minecraft will probably run a little better than this one does, but you get a feel for what this uh, GTX 950A can do in a casual game. So let's take a look now at something a little more demanding, and that is Rocket League. And you can see what settings I have set for the game here. Let's pop out of the uh, menu here and see what kind of frame rates we get. So I'm seeing anywhere from like the high 50s to 75 or so. So I think you could safely uh, run this at 60 frames per second with this GPU built in and uh, have a pretty decent gameplay experience here. So not bad for uh, Minecraft and Rocket League and other things. Let's take a look now and see what Counter-Strike GO can do on this computer. All right, so here are the settings I've got in Counter-Strike GO. Let's pop out of the menu here and rejoin my game in progress. And I'm getting anywhere from about 60 to 70 frames per second up to about 100 frames per second depending on the complexity of the scene. I would say it's probably averaging around 70 to 75 uh, with those settings on this particular map. So not bad actually, and certainly a lot better than what you would get if you did not have a GPU on here at all. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, we got a score of 12,700, which puts it ahead of uh, machines that don't have a GPU built in, but uh, certainly not a top of the line gaming machine. I also ran the uh, more demanding Time Spy test, and on that one we got a score of 1,054. And take a look at what we got on the Y910, which is the gaming version of Lenovo's all-in-one. And on that test, we got a score of 5,051 on that device. But look at the CPU score. They're about the same. And uh, that score should be higher, at least for the CPU, on this one because it has a faster CPU. But I think it's being hindered by its memory performance. Remember, this is running with a, a single channel configuration on its RAM, uh, whereas their gaming device has it in dual channel configuration. I think the uh, memory is really bottlenecking the processor here in that uh, this cannot feed that processor quick enough with its
its single channel RAM configuration right now, which I think is uh, contributing to that lower score. All right, we're going to go back into mirror mode here for a second because I did want to show you the 4K performance in uh, Kodi. So we're going to uh, play back this HEVC file real quick. Now, this is a pretty demanding file because it is at 4K. This is a native resolution file for this display and highly compressed with HEVC. And I'm not seeing any drop frames. There's like two skip frames in there, but it looked fine to me. So it's able to keep up with that. I also got a Blu-ray uh, MKV here also running at uh, 1080p being upconverted or upscaled to 4K, and this is also playing back without any issues either. So uh, not a bad little multimedia experience. And the speakers aren't bad either. They're on the bottom of the display here, so you get decent stereo separation. Uh, it sounds good. It's uh, uh, decent for what you're getting here. Of course, you'll get better sound hooked up to a home theater receiver or some other kind of higher end speaker, but uh, nonetheless, not bad for what is packed in on this. Now, one last thing I wanted to ask all of you about is the uh, Intel RealSense camera that is packed in at the top here. This is a uh, depth sensing camera that supposedly gives you some additional functionality beyond uh, just being a webcam. And I uh, talked about this very briefly in my review of the Y910 from Lenovo that also had that technology built in. I can't find a compelling use case to say that this is a really cool feature that you have to have. Uh, some of you were offended by that and said, oh no, it's great, you can do all this stuff with it, but I'd love to get uh, some things that I could demo very easily with this technology that I might do as a follow-up video because I'm not sold on this. It feels a lot like the Microsoft Connect thing to me, which is uh, cool, but it really hasn't been widely accepted or welcomed by consumers, and I just don't see how this works in a uh, all-in-one PC. So I'd love to get some ideas from all of you of some things I should try with that camera because uh, to me it's kind of not a uh, feature that I'm all that excited about and I really think I need to get better educated on that. So definitely leave me some comments down below with some suggestions of things for me to try. So overall the 910, not to be confused with the Y910 from Lenovo, uh, is not a bad computer. It's a good family PC. It's got a very uh, contemporary styling to it of course, but um, the one thing that I'm really disappointed about with this is the display quality. So although we do get a 4K display on here, uh, it is definitely definitely muddled by the touch layer and it is very reflective as you can see uh, throughout this video here. It's a little more pronounced here under studio lights, but even when I was just testing it when I hooked it up without the lights on, it was still a little bit more reflective than I would like. Probably one of the most reflective screens I have looked at. Uh, I would suggest if you're looking for a decent all-in-one uh, to take a look at their gaming one, the Y910, and I have a review uh, linked down below in the video description on that because uh, that one is very upgradable. It has got um, everything kind of contained within the unit. There's no power brick. The display looks a lot nicer and it's a a lot faster for gaming and video editing and other things that you might be doing in a uh, family PC kind of environment. It may not be all that much more than this one depending on the configuration you're getting uh, on it. So of course you can get this one for under $1,000 with uh, the 1080p version, but I don't think the uh, Y910 is all that much more in its lower end configuration and their low end one on that, on that model is actually a little faster on the graphics than uh, this one will be. So definitely worth taking a look at uh, throughout the course of your decision making. But uh, by and large, not a bad family PC, decent for video editing and everything else. But uh, definitely take a look at that Y910 first, which might be a better fit for everyone in the family and will have better image quality too. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lan.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lan.tv slash s.